Hello viewers, let's learn about microservice today. And in microservice, what we'll learn today, we'll learn about service discovery using Netflix Eureka. We'll also, we'll go through some sample coding practices for Eureka Servo. We'll see what is API Gateway using Netflix Joule, and we'll all, we'll do some sample coding practices for Joule API Gateway. Let's try to understand how Eureka, Eureka Server works. So here you can see there are multiple micro, independent microservices which runs and through Eureka, we can discover all the microservices which is running. Here you can see Joule is one of the API gateway and Eureka contains information about all the servers which is running, microservices which is running. Joule can con take information from the Eureka server for all the microservices which is running and can do the routing. Eureka is also known as service discovery. Eureka server is an application that holds the information about all client service application. Every microservice will register into the Eureka server and Eureka server knows all the client application running on each port and IP address. Eureka server is also known as discovery server. Eureka naming server is a rest based server that is used in AWS cloud service for load balancing and failover of middle dial services. Eureka naming server is an application that holds information about all the client service applications. Each microservice registers itself with the Eureka naming server. The naming server registers the client service with their port number and IP addresses. It runs on the default port of 8761. Remember, this is the default port, you need to override it. It also comes with the Java-based client component, the Eureka client, which makes interaction with the service much easier. Now let's learn about what is Zool, which is also known as the API gateway in microservice. You can see the client services, client applications, wanted to interact with microservice, but we can have Zool API gateway in between, which can act as a filter. And there are four kinds of filter, pre-filter, post-filter, error filter, and route filter. Now, Zool API Gateway can connect to all the microservices which is running. In a typical architecture, front ends call the API Gateway and API Gateway, then call the other microservices which is running. Zool API Gateway. Zool acts as an API Gateway for its services. It receives all the requests coming from the UI and then it delegates the request to the internal microservices. The advantage of this type of design is that common aspect like course, authentication, and security can be put into a centralized service. So all the common aspect will be applied on each request. And if any changes occurs in the future, we just have to update the business logic of this edge service. Zool provides a range of different types of filters that allows you to quickly and nimbly apply functionality to our edge servers services. The filter performs the following functions authentication and security it provides authentication and requirement for each resource insight and monitoring it tracks many meaningful data and statistics that gives us the accurate view of the production dynamic routing it dynamically routes the request to the different backend assets as needed so let's try to implement eureka and Joule in our code so to start with and I have created four projects. There are four microservices, microservice one, microservice two. Then I have created another microservice, which is which will deploy it as a Eureka server, and another microservice, which will act as a Zool gateway, API gateway. Now, these are very simple microservices. If you want to go inside it, you can see microservice one application, which which has three annotations. REST controller, as we know, is for defining the REST APIs. I have created one REST API. Now, Spring Boot application, as we know, uh, Spring Boot, uh, to enable a Spring Boot, we, we have to annotate it, like a Spring Boot annotate, Spring Boot application, and enable Eureka client. This is new thing for you. If So, this will act as a Eureka client. 
now to get this annotation and to get this services you need to add in the form.xml the dependencies now here you can see i have done the packaging as jar because microservices are mostly executed as jar uh, and i'm doing right now java version 1.8 Now this is the dependency for Netflix Eureka client. So this is sample microservice which has just one REST API, echo MS1 and it will just print hello from microservice one. And what is the configuration that I did? Server port, it will run on 8090 microservice one and its name is microservice one and it will be registered to eureka server 9797 on what is 9797 and what is eureka server so i created another server another microservice which will be independently deployed and you can see it will run on 9797 that's why to register to the eureka service eureka server we have given 9797 that is the port on which the eureka server will run Okay, now Eureka server along with this will have a name, simple application name. And since I don't want to register this microservice uh, with the Eureka service, that's why I had added false. And this is the application, sample application file. Here we have added enable Eureka servers. In the client, we have added annotation enable Eureka client and in the server you have to add enable eureka servers okay and for eureka servers this is the dependency which needs to be added netflix eureka servers now let's try to run this and before running so i have created one more service eureka microservice 2 which is similar to microservice one. I just wanted to show that we can register more than one services. Now, this is microservice two, which will run on port 8091, and it will be also registered with Eureka servers. So let's run first Eureka server. Now, this is the to run it from uh, so i'm using intellij and to run it directly you can run microservice eureka it is trying to build the serve, build the classes and then it will run it you can also run using the command line i'll show you uh, i'll run one of the microservice using the command line but let's first run the microservice eureka server and we know that it is going to be executed on port 9797 now once it will get started port 9797 is the one on which it will run so this is the spring eureka server is not started now you can see there is no instances which is attached to it right now let's try to run microservice one and we know that microservice one will run on port 8090 and it will register itself with Eureka server. So if it runs, let's try to refresh the Eureka servers. You can see that microservice one is registered now. Now let's again try to register microservice two.
Now let's refresh it. You can see that microservice 2 is also registered. So we have seen that as per PPT, different microservices which will be registering to Eureka server and through Eureka server, we can get to know which other microservices are registered and on which ports. As we know, microservice 1 will run on 8090 and microservice 2 will run on 8091. Now let's try to see, try to call this microservice. Uh, one of the REST API that I had created, equal MS2. Hello from microservice2. And here it will be. microservice one so we have seen that from microservice 2 this API gets called this rest API endpoint gets called hello from microservice 2 with the name microservice 2 with the name and it is running on port 1891 now we can have it on single port single slash as well so that's how the two microservices are in and in, using Eureka, you can discover the services. That's why it is also called discover service, service discovery. Now let's see API gateway. So in API gateway, we, are, we can do the rerouting. So microservice one runs on 1890 microservice 2 runs on 1891. This is the routing URL zoom.routes and after that we have to give the route URL name. So for microservice 1 which is running on 1890 I am giving routes URL as microservice 1. For microservice 2 I am giving microservice 2. This name can be user user friendly any name that you want but internally you treat it redirect to this path. So the client endpoint will just need to know the API gateway URL, not the all the ports on which the different microservices are running. And microservice, microservice Joule application has a special annotation enable Joule proxy. Now this annotation is possible through this class and which is possible through a dependency that I'll show you here. Now this is the dependency which is needed, which is needed to get the Joule configuration and Joule classes. Now I have created enable Joule proxy and added, and uh, I had added four filters. You can add whatever is needed as per business logic. I'm not adding anything here right now. And in the application properties, I have done the routing for two microservices which is running right now. Now Ribbon as we know is used for load balancing and this API gateway will run on port 8081. Let's try to run this. Once it will get executed, you don't need to call you can directly call from the API gateway, Joule API gateway. You don't need to call these microservices separately. So now it's running. Let's see. Uh, and it is running on port 8081. Let me confirm the port. It is running on port 8081. So, localhost. 8181 slash now to call microservice 2 I don't need to give the port 8091 because I know that if I'll write like this and will give the path as now 
this will get called c it is getting called why it is getting called because through this routing url which i had configured in application properties microservice 2 it will route to localhost 8091 which is equal to this 8091 and after that the same endpoint i can access from the which i was accessing using this microservice i can access indirectly through the gateway that is the, through the Joule gateway similarly for this also which is running on 8090 i can get that see microservice one gets called why it's gets called because if i write microservice one then it will route to this and when it will route to 8090 it will go to this microservice and through this rest endpoint it will call that so this is how the api gateway works now that's all for today today we learn we learn how to set up a micro an Eureka server and how to set up an API gateway in microservice. Now, before we wind up, if anyone wants to learn how to start a microservice using how to start a microservice using the command line, that I will show here. So, here I am inside microservice two. And uh, let me go here. So microservice 2, whenever we do MVN clean install, this gets generated. The jar will get generated. Why the jar will get generated? Because in the pom.xml, I had added that package it as jar. So that's where the jar will get. Uh, if I'll package it as war, then uh, whenever we'll do MVN clean install, the word file will get generated now to run it what i'll do java minus jar microservice 2 and if i hit this remember this command java minus jar have from minus jar space jar name if i'll run it then also the same microservice you can run the microservice through the command line as well Now I have stopped all the servers. As you know, I am only running microservice 2 from here. So if I'll go to our server, and if I'll try to run this, this should not work. See, it doesn't get loaded because I have stopped all the servers. This server is also stopped. This is also stopped. This is also stopped. I'm just running microservice 2. So, and uh, you can do it using localhost as well. Okay, so today we learned how to execute using Java file as well. Now I'll stop the servers. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.